Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo, Emma Peel stepped over the dead body of Edward Salt and searched his desk. The Admiral attempted to give a hand. What's this? Railway tickets. London to Norbury, first class return. Well, there must be hundreds of them. Man must have had an obsession about railways. Look, Admiral, they're all punched. Oh. See? All neatly punched through the middle O in Norbury. The hole's about the size of a micro dot. It makes sense. Salt fills in the O with a micro dot. And the ticket collector clips it out again. And the message is passed on to the ticket collector. We've got it, Admiral. We've got it. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel. The Avengers. Once an OMO user, always an OMO user. This is what Mrs. Lyons of Yellowwood Park, Durban, has to say. It is the one part of it does everything. Well, for me, I know that. Yes. There's so many things that I've, I've used and experimented with just to prove cold water omo, really to put it to the ultimate test, you know, and I find that it's, it's come up to all my expectations. Yes. Cold water omo cleans best. There is too much chocolate, too much chocolate, double chocolate ice. There is cool chocolate inside, milk chocolate outside, double chocolate, 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 chocolate ice. Double chocolate, another great taste from Episode 5 of the story, in which John Steed is lost and found, and Mrs. Peel makes a determined effort to correct a disastrous train of events. Mrs. Peel had lost John Steed. In checking up on Edward Salt, she'd raced to Norbert Station to keep an appointment with Steed. He wasn't there, only his umbrella swinging gently from the luggage rack. Mrs. Beale had managed to collect it and listen to the message Steed had recorded upon the secret apparatus in the handle, but it hadn't told her very much. She'd turned for help to Admiral Cartney, and they'd found Salt's body. Now, Mrs. Beale was sure she was on the right line. Railway line, which would take her to Chase Halt Station yet again. In the station was a train. The ticket collector opened the door. The man who was posing as a bridegroom climbed in. I'd be going. Lengthy. Mr. Salt is no more, and I've brought you a little cheesecake. A memento. It's Salt's mini camera. Might be useful. Good. Let's see how your worthy bride is getting along. Are you making progress? Yes. Nearly finished. The bride was working on the floor, installing a bomb under the corner window seat. Just reassure me. How do we know that the vibrations of the train won't set it all? You'll have to take my word. She has a good list of credit. It's all very fine, but never anyone is important. <laughs> what triggers the bomb off? A radio signal. Where will it come from? From this train. Yeah, sounds dangerous. There should be at least a mile between us. We don't want to blow ourselves up as well. We won't. At the moment it goes up, we'll be speeding away in the opposite direction. Now relax. We all have our problems. What's yours? Well, for instance, how do we get this carriage off this train and onto his train? Easy. Here's your answer. The ticket collector produced a series of very official stick labels. He showed them to the group. They all read... This carriage to be commandeered and prepared for VIP train. Very important person. Very. I'll transfer this carriage tomorrow and I'll attend to it personally. <laughs> I'll be sorry to see it go. Not to worry. You may be losing a carriage, but he is gaining a bomb.
Mrs. Peel arrived at the deserted Chase Halt station carrying Steed's umbrella. She immediately went to the tool chest where they had found Mark Lucas's body and was relieved to find it empty. Far up along the platform could be heard the querulous voice of old Crewe. He was singing to himself as he went about his self-inflicted duty. Oh, when I marry your daughter, oh, I Mrs. Field dodged back into the shadows as she heard footsteps approaching. A man approached, hand in coat pocket, clearly touching a gun. Are you Mr. Crew? Oh, yes. You yes. live here? Oh, I've got a little place in my signal box. Semi-detached. Here, further along the line. You live alone? Hey, what are the questions? Who are you? The man was about to withdraw his hand from his pocket when Mrs. Peel moved like lightning. She grabbed his wrist. It wasn't a gun at all. It was an identification card. Uh, Mrs. Peel, Mrs. Peel. I don't know you. George Warren, I'm a friend of Steve. Oh, yes? Then where does he buy his trilbies? He doesn't. He wears bowlers and buys them in St. James's. This is my identification card. Uh, what are you doing here? I could ask you the same thing. Ah, but I thought of it first. Special security watch all along this railway line. Oh? Someone important traveling along it? Perhaps you don't understand me, Mrs. Peel. Special security. Can't divulge details to anyone. And I mean anyone. Now then, what about you? What are you doing here? I wanted Mr. Crewe's advice on a railway matter. Oh, my experience is at your disposal, Mrs. Peel. Um, but why don't we retire to my signal box, talk over a nice cup of tea? Splendid. Now, what exactly is your problem? Well, it's this umbrella. I want you to listen to it. <laughs> In the just married compartment of the train, the ticket collector faced the bride and groom. A mini camera of salts. There was a film in it. It's a practical place to keep a film, right there. So I've just had it developed. It's detailed security on this line. They're sending a special branch man to visit every station along the route. Well, so what? Don't you see that means chase halt? They'll find Lucas's body. And that means the game is up. Unless I can get to the special branch man first. When do we reach Chase Hall? Coming up in about ten minutes. The groom grinned and reached beneath the seat, producing a Tommy gun. Splendid. An unscheduled stop is indicated. Don't you think? In the signal box, drinking hot, sweet tea, Mrs. Peel demonstrated the mechanism of the tape recorder in the umbrella and said... You see, in the background is the clatter of the train. Now, is it possible for you to pinpoint the exact section of a rail which made that noise? Noise? Noise, madam? Poetry. Pure poetry. Uh, another stanza, please. Uh, look here, Mrs. Peel. This may be all very interesting, but what does it all mean? Steve's disappeared. This is the only lead I have. If I can find just where he was when he was held up, then it's a step in the right direction. Well, Mr. Crew? Well, let me hear it again. <laughs> Sounds all wrong. Yeah. There are two sets of diddly bombs. No, oh, it's impossible. A train can't be going fast and slow at the same time. He's right. Diddly bomb. Diddly bomb. Yeah, yes. You know, I don't think this part is a train at all. Just a minute, just a minute. Diddly bomb. Diddly bomb. It's the Mark V tapping code, a sort of trick mold device so that man could communicate with each other in prison of war camps. Yeah, let's pull it back, Mr. Spear. Give it to me again. Right. Junction is on this line. Well, uh, nine lines with close couple of points of Hampson Hampson design. The original lines laid down in 1899. Mm, further modifications carried out on uh, April 25th. Uh, hey, that, that's, uh, that's funny. Uh, the train stopped at the station. <laughs> Nothing ever stops here. There's something, uh, something very wrong there. Uh, must be something very wrong. station, the train had stopped. The groom slipped out onto the platform. He headed for the tool chest and was amazed to see that it no longer contained a body. The old boy in the signal box. It must be him. Right. Holding the Tommy gun at the ready, the groom hurried up the line. 
In the signal box, Mrs. Peel was insisting that she should be told the complete truth. Look, if someone important is traveling on this line, I have a right to know. Now, is it today? Tonight. But who is traveling tonight? I must... <laughs> Mrs. Peel had leapt at old crew, knocking him over into safety. But George Warren lay on the floor, dying. Mrs. Peel crawled over to him. Who is it, Warren? Who's traveling this line tonight? <coughs> the Prime Minister. Mrs. Peel and old crew only just managed to get to the train before it started to pull out. In the corridor, they paused to get their breath. Uh, oh, I, I still don't see why you had to pull me along. You're my only ally. The only one I can trust. Well, that's extremely kind of you. But... Look, all the others are dead or missing. My dear lady, I fear that my services would be to no avail at all. You're getting a ride on a train, aren't you? How could you turn your back on no, that? that? That is true, of course. Um, yes, sir. Uh, this is a nice example of the five oblique stroke seven seven type carriage. Yes, well, let's go into details later. Yeah. We must find Steve. Come on. I'll start here. You follow the ticket collector. Ticket collector? Uh, then what? Watch him. See what he does, where he goes. And come back and tell me. Off you go. Poor old crew did his best, but the ticket collector and the groom had retired beyond the restaurant car to the galley, which turned out to be more a chief operations room than anything else. We'll keep this door locked from now on. Only those who give the correct signal are allowed in. Are you comfortable, Mr. Steed? John Steed was handcuffed by one hand to a steel chair. I have been worse. I thought you should witness the final phase. I thought it might amuse you. Oh, but it isn't of you. Yes, for me, really. A coup isn't a coup unless someone is there to see it. Someone to impress. Well, I'm afraid I shan't be able to applaud with these handcuffs on. Still, I can shout the uh, author if that'll help. The look in your eyes will be enough. Apathy? Agony. You see, I'm going to kill your Prime Minister. The presumption. How do you know which way I voted? I'm not considering your politics. Merely your patriotism. It's greatly exaggerated. I think not. Our trains will pass at about 8.57. And then you will hear the Big Bang. Housewives everywhere are discovering new Lux Cream of Lemon dishwashing liquid. Have you tried it, madam? Yes, I like it. Kind for my hands. And you? Yes. Gets my dishes sparkling clean. And you, madam? No, I haven't tried it yet. If you haven't yet tried new Lux Cream of Lemon dishwashing liquid, now's the time. New Lux Cream of Lemon really cares for your hands and gets your dishes sparkling clean. Lux Cream of Lemon at your shop now. So many women tell us that once an OMO user, always an OMO user. Women like Mrs. Clark of East London. This is certainly the one that I've stuck to. And it's all I get now. Yes, cold water OMO cleans best. Over a million housewives have proved it. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omos.